a ministry wife is a vocation without a job description. And let's be honest, sometimes it seems like ministry might be easier if we did have one. If you are a ministry wife like me and are looking for hope, perspective, and a little bit of practical advice regarding your role, you're in the right place. Hi, I'm Christine Hoover, author of How to Thrive as a Pastor's Wife. Welcome to the Ministry Wives podcast, a production of the North American Mission Board. Join me as we hear from women from various ministry contexts having authentic conversations about our shared joys and challenges, even the ones we're unsure we can talk about. No topic is off limits. Today, my guest is my friend, Caroline Cobb. Caroline is a singer-songwriter, and we talk some about her ministry through that, but she's also married to Nick, who is a lay elder at their church in East Dallas. I asked Caroline to join me today to talk about the joys and challenges of serving in a lay elder's role. Caroline shares what this means for her, what it means for her family, and how she supports her husband in his ministry as a lay elder. Here, friends, is my conversation with Caroline Cobb. I'm so excited to welcome Caroline Cobb to the podcast. Hi, Caroline. Hey, Christine. I love getting to talk to you because I listen to your voice singing all the time and then to get to talk to you is so fun. Do people tell you that all the time? I mean, sometimes, but um, I'm I'm really thankful to be here too because I've listened to your voice too and kind of respect you and look up to you. So, Oh, well, thank you. Yeah. Well, I just started right in talking about your singing, <laughs> but will you introduce yourself and your, your family, your ministry context? Yes, you do all that for sure. My name's Caroline, and I'm married to Nick. We have three kids. Ellie is about to be 14, and Harrison will be 12 this summer. Libby is um, 10, and Nick is currently a financial advisor. But before that, he was on pastoral staff at two different churches for eight years, and we've done a lot of different things. But uh, we're still at the church where he was on pastoral staff, White Rock Fellowship, which is a small neighborhood church in East Dallas. And for me, I'm a singer songwriter. And actually, I don't even know if I've told you this yet. I think I have, um, this is new, but I'm also going to be a published author come September. Yes. I remember now when you said that I've seen it on Instagram, remind Mm -hmm. me what you, what you wrote, what's coming out. Well, we're just taking this one step at a time. Um, I have so much more respect for you guys. For you writers, because it's a totally different skill set. Uh, but I wrote about Advent. It's an Advent devotional based on this theme of exile. And it's really an extension of an album that I did. It's a Christmas album or an Advent to Christmas album called A Sea to Sunrise. And I was just able to explore those themes even more. So I'm excited about that. That's um, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I just honestly, I love doing creative work um, for God's glory. So Every album and concert and um, now book, I guess. Can you tell I'm getting used to this idea? Uh, This book, this (laughs) prayer that I have and this hope that I have is that people would be able to marinate in God's big story and really be drawn to the deep things of God and, and see the beauty of the gospel, which I think is just the best news ever. And so I love being able to sing it over people. And now I guess... Uh, write it over people and help people rehearse and remember that that story. Yeah, you need to stop saying I guess because you <laughs> no. are dealing with it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> yeah. It's a little it's very vulnerable to put a book out in the world. I would yes. imagine it's the same for music. I listeners, if you have not heard of Caroline or listened to her music, you gotta go find her on Spotify or Apple Music because what I love about Caroline's music is she takes God's word and then turns it into song. And even has written, correct me if I'm wrong, Caroline, but you've written a song for every book of the Bible. Mm -hmm. That was like a a thing that you did a few years back. And, um, but you've written a lot more than just that. But I, I find your music to be so, it's just scripture that you've written out for us to sing. And I love it. Yeah. I, I, that's how this whole thing started where I always had music as kind of this hobby that I did. And then one year I was like, I love God's word. I love writing songs. Let's make a goal of this. And so I wrote a song for every book of the Bible in a year. And they're all on the internet somewhere, but a lot of them are hidden because maybe they're not that good. But it was such a good, it was such a good exercise for me. And I was like, I, the Bible is just this deep well, and I could keep writing songs from it forever. So I just put out an album on the Psalms. That's my most recent 
Yes, and I, I love it. Love, I just love getting to do this work. Yes, I love your Psalms, Psalm One song. Yeah, it's fun. That's one of my favorites. Um, okay, so are, I think you told me that you were going to also go on staff or work on, I don't know how it works, yeah. but that you are a songwriter in residence at your church. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. I'm an artist in residence. I'm not on staff, um, but I'd love okay. to tell you this story because yes. it's been huge for me. Um, so the idea of this artist in residence thing in general, like you've heard of churches having that, is really just a church being a patron of the arts and saying, hey, we see your work and we see the creativity that you're putting into the world and you know, how it's pointing to God. And we think it matters to the kingdom and we want to get behind you and bless you and send you. And so I had heard of artists in residence, but a lot of times they'll like work for their church, um, maybe lead worship for 30 hours. You know, that's their job for 30 hours a week and 10 hours a week. They're still paid, but they get to write songs. So I wasn't sure if this would work out, but I actually approached our church and said, um, and asked if they would send me as a missionary <laughs> because I had hit this spot where I was feeling really burned out uh, ministry wise. I was feeling lonely. Um, I also felt this tension between, I love our local church. I'm like fully committed. I serve a lot, but I knew I could be doing more there. Um, I saw more needs that I could potentially, you know, fill or, or meet and, I could lead worship more. I could meet with more of the younger women or whatever it was. But yet I just felt this burden um, that I kept asking the Lord, do you want to take this away? Do you want me to do something else? This burden to write music and to do this creative work and to go out into the world and encourage the big C church, share the gospel with people through music. And so there was this tension for me and really like a guilt. Like every time I left, I was feeling like, oh, but I, if I wasn't doing this, then I could be doing this. And so for me, uh, it solved two problems to just approach the church and say, would you send me, would you, would you bless what I'm doing? Um, I actually had a conversation one time with Nancy Guthrie, who goes out and does these like biblical teaching work, biblical theology workshops. And she said that her elders have her dates that she's gone. They they're sending her with their prayers. They're praying for her. Mm -hmm they're behind her and her going out, which means her being less available to teach at their church. Right. And so that was a thought that I was like, maybe it, our church would do that for me. And they did. And uh, it, I'm not technically a missionary. I'm more of an artist in residence, but they're sending me and blessing what I'm doing. And I think for me, that was a huge relief financially just to have a little more freedom and not feel like I had to hustle so hard or travel so much in order to keep making music, but also just this spiritual, emotional aspect to it to say for this season, you know, we're taking it year by year. My church is saying, go. My church is saying, thank you for serving. And I'm continuing to serve at our local church, women's ministry, leading worship, things like that. But they also are blessing me as I go. And that's been such a gift, honestly. Um, it's not transactional at all. Like if I pulled all the way back from volunteering, I don't think they would pull away their support. And I don't think I'm planning to do that, but it's it's been a really big blessing. I love that. Mm -hmm. I can resonate. I mean, I think we, you and I have talked about this yeah. in the past, that it's such a challenge for this at this pull between the local church and the big C church. And if God, I really feel like over time he's, because I felt the same guilt, I felt the same questioning, am I doing the wrong thing? But I feel like God has confirmed this is the gift that he's given me to to go and to speak and to use what he's taught me. And so it's such a challenge. And so to have a church that supports you like that, I love that so much because it makes you feel like you're not alone in right. what you're doing yeah, and that you have the the cheerleading of your local church. So yeah. That's amazing. I love that it. you're not disappointing them, but you're actually like, they, they want you to do this, that they're sending yeah. you. And I, that's, that's been really big. Yes. I love it. Okay. Well, I want to switch gears a little bit because one part of your ministry is that your husband serves as a lay elder at your church. Mm -hmm. And I would love to just pick your brain about that because I know there are a lot of women listening who are in that same boat, their husbands are leading in the church on a volunteer basis. 
And that requires a lot from them time-wise and sacrificially. And so I'd love to, first, let's just talk about what your husband does as a lay elder yeah. at your specific church. Um, because I'm, you said earlier he's a financial planner, so he's working full time, but he's giving a lot of his hours to the church. And so okay. can you tell us what he does as a lay elder? Yeah. And I know it's different for different churches. So, but for us, practically, it just means, you know, they're in charge of shepherding and oversight. So that means they're meeting every other week, um, sometimes for really long stretches. Like I was laughing because I knew I had this interview this morning and last night they had an elder meeting. Um, it started at six 30 and Nick didn't get home till like midnight. And of course I can't go to sleep till he's there. So, and then we, when he got yeah. home, we talked about everything, you know, and just, uh, talked through things. And so it's the meetings. Um, he's called into different pastoral situations. Like if the marriage is struggling or, uh, financial situations when people are struggling with their finances or trying to think through things, Nick will preach. Not all our elders do this, but Nick will preach from time to time or he'll teach, or lead at like men's Bible study or a new members class. Um, and right now he's putting in a lot of hours as we're looking for this new pastor. Um, our most recent pastor who we love, uh, we sent him to a new call in a new city. And so our church is um, doing a pastoral search right now. So the elders and the search committee are putting in a lot of extra hours. So I think practically it's just a lot of hours and a lot of time, but I think there's also sort of this intangible, this mental load, this spiritual weight, if you will, just like a pastor feels uh, like this weight of the church and it's a good weight. It's a good labor, but they're thinking about the church, not just in meetings or on working hours. They're, you know, thinking about her at night, they're jumping on the phone, trying to wrestle through things. They're praying through things. And so for him, I think it's this uh, physical thing, this practical thing that he's, you know, spending a lot of time doing this, but he's also got a lot of spiritual and emotional energy invested into our church. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that way, it's similar to, to a pastor. It's not quite the same, I think, obviously, as a pastor who's up front, but he is carrying that weight for sure. Yeah, which seems like a challenge if you also are carrying the weight of a full-time job. Yeah, that's right. At the same time. Mm -hmm. how, how does he do that? How do you manage that? You know, we're we're still like figuring it out a little bit. Um, Nick is really good at just spending time with the Lord and kind of keeping some limits um, too. So I don't know quite how you manage it all, honestly, um, but there's such different parts of his brain that he's using, you know, over here, the finance world, spreadsheets, you know, you, you make sh everything you can check off and it's done and it all reconciles over here. You have people and this pastoral heart and it's never quite done, right? You can't, it's not a spreadsheet. You can't just say, oh, it's done. Right. It's perfect. It's right. There's always this dynamic that's happening where um, things are moving. There's a lot of moving parts and obviously you're so dependent on the Lord to to move and to change people. And so it's just a totally different uh, thing. And he's figuring out the balance for sure. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about how that affects you and your children, because that you are intentionally choosing to sacrifice for God's people by affirming him as an elder and, and supporting him. So can you tell me uh, how maybe how this affects you on a daily, weekly basis and how you're navigating that. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have any like frustration really. I, I, I really love that he's an elder. Like I've told him multiple times, I'm like so thankful that you're one of our elders and I'm not being gushy. Like I just, I, I, I know how he has ministered to me and balanced me out because I can tend to be certain ways that he's not. And I'm just thankful that that voice is on the elder team. Um, but in terms of us, so for us, I just feel like it's so normal. Like he's been doing ministry for so long that it's just, of course he has an elder meeting, but when you step back a little bit, you're like, wow, he is giving, he is giving a lot of time to this and mental energy um, and creativity. And so some of that is, does cost us for sure. Um, I think that we're, we're, we're all glad and no one, I don't think my kids know any different, honestly, at this point. Um, but it does it does affect how much time he's home or uh, kind of what he might be thinking about when we're having some downtime. 
you know? So yeah, it's, it's yeah. there for sure. But I'm, I'm really thankful that he's one of the elders. Uh huh. What do you think there are specific challenges for a lay elder versus someone who is on staff? And, and I, I let me rephrase that because mm-hmm. I'm thinking more about you. So for me as a pastor's wife, my husband is on staff. What do you think are, are some unique challenges that you face with, with having a lay elder husband Yeah, um, that we don't have? Yeah, I think because Nick was on staff, he has a little, there's still people that remember him as being on staff, but those people are, you know, that's turning over. There's a lot of new people that didn't realize he was ever on staff because it's been almost two years. So I think part of that is that sometimes people don't even know, you know, who the elders wives are. And yet those elders wives um, are, I don't know that it's as much that way for me at this point in our church's life, but some of my friends that are elders wives, people might not realize how much they are ministering to our church just by ministering to their husbands and giving their husbands time, you know, over sacrificing that so that their husbands can be part of that yeah. elder team. Um, so I think there's a little bit of, you're not as well known. And sometimes that's a nice thing. <laughs> sometimes it's it's one of those things where uh, there's a lot of people serving behind the scenes in unseen ways that people will never know. Yeah, that's good. Well, what about, uh, two things come to mind that I want to ask you about is, um, you mentioned earlier him coming home and y'all debriefing Mm -hmm. the elder meeting. Mm -hmm. So I would love to know how y'all have chosen. I think this is a very unique to each marriage question, but I want to know about you guys. What have you decided that he will and won't share with you? Oh, that's a great question. We've had to wrestle through that because sometimes I don't, I, um, well, I'll just say this. Like, I don't know everything. Like, I think when he is sharing with me what he needs um, support in, if that, if that makes sense. Okay. So mm-hmm. I might not know all the details of a marriage that's falling apart or who it even is, but I know that there's a marriage falling apart and he's ministering to them. And sometimes I will know, but I won't know all the, the story. You know, I won't, he won't yeah. share their story because that's their story to tell me. And yet at the same time, if he didn't tell me about it at all, I wouldn't be able to support him and care for him as a wife. And so it's a little bit of a dance and there's a lot of wisdom that needs to happen there. Um, And so I think we were, I was actually asking him some questions last night. Like, how do you think you being an elder affects me? And um, he reminded me that we've kind of had to work out this, this dance of, of, I, I mean, it's my church too. So I have opinions and I have thoughts and I've, I've also <laughs> been in ministry and I've, as a singer songwriter that travels around a lot, I've been around a ton of different churches. So I've seen how it's done elsewhere. Um, and so we've had to kind of wrestle through sometimes when he just needs me to listen and to pray and if, to be choosy about when I like balance him out and when I'm kind of trying to, um, give him another opinion after he's heard about 20 opinions from, you know, the whole church and everyone on the, you know, every, all the staff and the elders. And he's like, I don't need more opinions right now. What I need is just for you to listen. Um, And so he's been better about telling me. And a lot of times he'll say, Uh I just really need you to listen. But then sometimes he'll say, will you listen to this and tell me what you think? Because I want, he wants me to balance him out. And we do balance Mm -hmm. each other out a lot and are good compliments for each other in terms of, you know, our personalities and how we think about things. I tend to think about how people are feeling and he's tending to think about what is right. And so I think those two things go together really well, but we just have to, uh, I just have to be careful about supporting him rather than trying to come in and, you know, give my opinion when he is just exhausted and has about 20 opinions and he doesn't need one more voice. And yet he wants to hear my voice too. So sometimes he'll just talk and then I'll say, let's pray. Let's pray about that. You know, um, he's like, Oh, can you pray? Cause he's, you know, he's white and he, he doesn't know what to pray. Um, Mm -hmm. and sometimes he's like, thank you. You're making me feel not crazy. You know, that kind of thing. 
uh, just, yeah. it's good. I, I think in our marriage, we balance and shape each other and form each other as parents, you know, and so that happens too with this, but it's, it's kind of, you have to use discernment about when to listen and when to pray and when to say something. And that's, there's yeah. no formula for that. There's no formula and it takes time to right. kind of learn that dance. Yes. Yeah. Another thing I think of, and I think this is the case, what we're talking about is the case for anyone, whether their husband's on staff or not as an elder. But another thing that we commonly experience, but you might experience in a little different way is sharing our husbands with the church. Mm -hmm. And so you're sharing your husband with his work and his volunteer ministry at the church. And so I'd love for you to speak to that just moments where I think we all have those moments where we're like, maybe a little resentful or, Mm. you know, feeling, feeling like, well, what about me? Or, you know, Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Um, How have you experienced that? And how have you kind of worked through those things? Yeah. I mean, I think for me, maybe the, the pain point uh, isn't so much time as it is when I'm a people pleaser and I want to be known. I want people to understand why we made this decision or why we made that decision. And I feel like an extension of Nick So when we've had some hard situations where maybe the elders are sort of having to wrestle through, maybe they disagree, or maybe they've made a decision as an elder team and people in the congregation don't agree. I mean, those are not, uh, those don't happen like every week, but there have been seasons where I've felt um, as an extension of him that people were uh, displeased with him and therefore with me. And sometimes people right. actually would act really awkward around me. Yeah. But the hard thing about that is that I'm not able to sometimes to honor the situation or to honor what was said. I might have insight into the situation, but I can't share it all with everyone and explain why they made the decision they made because right. that would be dishonoring or it's just not necessary, you know? And so that's been, as a people pleaser, I think that's the hardest part for me is to trust that um, I'm beloved by God, that one day when we're all sitting at the table, um, all will be made clear. God will send out his light and his truth. (laughs) And it might not all, I might not be able to explain myself and I won't, not everyone will. um, There will be seasons where someone might be displeased with me and I won't be able to get out of it, you know? And I think that's the hardest thing for me. And to find my identity in Christ in those moments is really important. Okay. So we've talked about some, you've mentioned along the way, ways that you try to support Nick in his role. Mm -hmm. Are there other specific things that you would give us just kind of to consider here are good ways to support our elder husbands, whether they're on staff or lay elders? Yeah. I mean, I think praying, um, my friend, Michelle, I was talking to her one day and I can't remember the context of, of the situation of our conversation, but I remember her saying like, if you think of your life, like a pie, you need to save a little bit of that pie for just supporting your husband as an elder on uh, Mm -hmm. staff that to leave some margin for some emotional and spiritual support um, as things come up or, as I'm praying for him, that that is part of the way I'm serving our church. Um, There's freedom to serve in so many different ways, but part of the way I'm serving our church is by serving and loving and supporting my husband. And I know you talk about this in your book about being a pastor's wife, but like we are influencing our husbands as they are, you know, leading the church. And I think that's true for a pastor, but also for an elder. And I've definitely felt that too. So just leaving a little bit of that margin is important and to, to not feel bad about just leaving that margin there. Yeah, Mm -hmm. for sure. That's so good. That's so good. And a little challenging to me when you were saying (laughs) that, I was like, Oh, I need to think about that. Uh, So just one final question that I have for you is how, how can, so for me, my husband is on staff, Mm -hmm. but then we have lay elders wives. How can I, as uh, in my role, support, either understand, support, help the lay elders' wives on on our at our church. Yeah, um, I mean, honestly, I think 
when I think about that, I think it's just an acknowledgement that even though our husbands have different roles, we're all really in this together. Um, like I know that I, I want to, I am, I want to be an open, a place where the lead pastor's wife can come and be safe to share the hardest stuff because I know it all too, you know, and I'm, I love the church so much as my husband's loving the church. And I, I think I am all in also just like the pastor's wife. And so I think it's not so much how they can support us, but to know, to be open and authentic with us and to know that we love them and that we support them and that we're in this together, that it's really a team. Um, Mm -hmm. I think another thing that's been interesting is when you're an elder's wife or a pastor's wife, that's not really an an office that you were elected to, you know, you're, you're, you're that by extension. And so a lot of times some of us have different um, ministries that we're passionate about that maybe don't seem to have the synergy that let's say a pastor's wife and then uh, a woman who's also on staff, that's his wife, you know, they're, they're really running side by side in terms of what their jobs entail day by day. Uh, But for me, I think that tension of wanting to do music um, doesn't seem on the outside looking in as having a ton of synergy with what Nick is doing at our church. Um, but to know that we're part of a body and to support each other in that those other callings that we might have. And I, I don't know how to how to wrestle that out or flesh that out. But the idea of saying that um, just because there are needs at our church doesn't mean that every elder's wife or pastor's wife is called to meet that need. In fact, they might actually be called to be sent out to do something else um, in the community or some other kind of vocation and to encourage each other in that and know that we're all in this together, but we also are all uniquely made in God's image to reflect him. And it might, for me, I, it's been so huge to be able to be Nick's wife, but not to only serve at the church, but also to serve outside in the big C church and to be sent by our church. I really enjoyed having this conversation with you, Caroline. Thank you so much for your insights on being a lay elder's wife. Thanks so much for listening to the Ministry Wives podcast, a production of the North American Mission Board. If you found this content helpful, please subscribe, rate, and review us on your podcast platform or share it with a friend. You can find this podcast and other helpful resources at ministrywivespodcast.com.